Hey folks, it's Thomas. Welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing my fourth year of my astrophysics degree at the University of St Andrews. I'm going to be going over what modules I took, how I found them and of course would I recommend them. I'll also be looking into extracurriculars and some of the roles that I had this year as well. Now I'm not going to share my exact grades with you because quite honestly that's quite personal information and I'd rather not. And also it wouldn't be that useful to you. We have a 20 point scale that isn't linear. So saying something like a 15 in a module wouldn't actually tell you that I got 75% because that doesn't map the same way. So I'm not going to share them because they're personal to me and they're kind of useless to anyone who doesn't go here anyway. Now to clarify for anyone who's not in Scotland, fourth year of an astrophysics degree at St Andrews is the equivalent of third year in the rest of the UK. It's the end of a Bachelor of Science degree and it's the penultimate year of, in my case, a Master of Physics degree. So four years of five for me, it would be third year of four if I was in the rest of the UK. With all that out of the way, let's crack on and talk about the academic side of this year, starting, of course, with semester one. Now, in semester one, I took four modules. Atomic Nuclear and Particle Physics, Introduction to Condensed Matter Physics, Observational Astrophysics and the Physics of Nebulae and Stars 1. First, we'll look at Atomic Nuclear and Particle Physics. This is a core module that everyone taking a physics degree has to take, so I didn't have any choice in whether I took this module or not. It looks at the very small things, atoms, subatomic particles like protons and neutrons, and the subnucleon particles, the fundamental particles such as quarks and electrons. This module builds on the third year quantum mechanics courses that I took, which I enjoyed and I did okay in, but they were far from my best modules. It also builds on some of the electromagnetism from third year, looking at the potential interactions and the electrostatic interactions between the positively charged nucleus and the negatively charged electrons orbiting. We also looked at nuclear decays and how that relates to nuclear fission and fusion reactions, both natural, like in the sun or from decaying elements like uranium, and the reactions that we cause as human beings to nuclear reactors. We looked at those fundamental particles that make up protons and neutrons and looked at how they spin, their quantum properties, and how they interact with each other. This module was probably the best taught of my first semester modules. One of the lecturers that took part of this module actually is education focused. There's quite a number of academics here in St Andrews that their main focus is looking at how to teach physics as opposed to researching physics itself. I really enjoyed this module and to be honest the fact that it was taught as well is probably part of the reason I enjoyed it so much and that I actually got a really good grade. It's jointly the best grade I got this academic year. I would recommend it. Doesn't really make a massive amount of difference. If you're doing a physics degree, you're going to do it. But yeah, it was a good module on the whole. Now let's move on and look at a module that I chose for myself. Introduction to Condensed Matter Physics. This was a module that I chose to fill out my timetable and I chose it because it looked interesting. Condensed matter is everything that is very cold. We're looking at Bose-Einstein condensates. We're looking at crystal lattices. We're looking at the vibrations that exist there and looking at them from a mathematical point of view and trying to understand what is going on. This module is meant to give you a good grounding in condensed matter physics for going on to later modules such as advanced condensed matter physics. This module builds a lot on the statistical physics from third year and as well on a little bit of quantum mechanics as well, which makes sense because we're dealing with individual particle level physics. In this module, we looked at crystal lattices, we looked at quantum vibrations, electrical transport, electron interactions, and even semiconductor physics. You know, the physics that lets your phone display me, or your computer display me, or my camera even capture my image. I found all this very interesting, but it was very clear that this module was not aimed at astrophysicists. It's aimed more at people on a theoretical track. So it used quite a bit of maths, and it's not necessarily something that I was particularly good at. Fortunately, I had a really good lecturer, a man called Dr. Chris Hooley. He's one of the best lecturers here in St Andrews, and I think it's probably thanks to him that I got a pretty decent grade. Not brilliant, not awful, sort of just below my average. So I'll take it. It was good. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it unless you like quite a bit of maths or you're good at quantum mechanics, but I had a bit of fun and it was by far not the worst module of the year. 
With the physics modules out of the way, let's have a look at some astrophysics. It is my degree title after all. So let's talk about observational astrophysics. This module was entirely coursework based and the vast majority of the module was based in a computational lab setting, supervised by a couple of academics. In this module, we used real data from real telescopes observing real astronomical objects and we use that data and some computer codes to try and answer questions, sometimes coming up with those research questions ourselves. In the first half of the lab, we used real data of exoplanet transits, potential exoplanet transits. Now, I'll make a separate video about transits at some point, so get subscribed for that. Exoplanet transits is a method of detecting exoplanets. We had some quite messy data because it was taken with a survey telescope as opposed to specifically looking at a star to find out what its transits were like from its exoplanets. So we had to take these candidate exoplanet detections and work out are they actually exoplanet detections. This was done by using computer code, a lot of which was actually given to us, but we had a bit of manipulation to do with it. And then we had to write a scientific report about our candidate exoplanet and then decide if we thought it was worth some further study by a more accurate telescope. In the second half of the semester, we turned our attention to star forming regions, bits of the galaxy where stars are actively being formed. This project was left a lot more open. We were given the tools and shown how to manipulate the data sets to see what's going on, and then told, come up with your own research question and try and answer it. I really liked this. I came up with a hypothesis that there had been two generations of star formation in this star forming region, and that the second had been instigated by the first. I wasn't quite able to get enough information out of this data set to say conclusively if I was right. There was, there was enough evidence that I was pretty sure I could be right, but not enough for me to say, yes, this is what is going on. And honestly, I really liked that. I liked that I was able to look at this information, this data, and decide, am I right? Am I clutching at straws? Is there something actually worth looking at here? And I really enjoyed this process of conducting research. It did teach me I don't really want to deal with telescope data going forward and I want to do more simulation stuff, but I really liked the process of research, the process of scientific writing. I think I'm actually starting to get the hang of it. It's quite fun. And this module was the other module that jointly topped my year along with atomic nuclear and particle physics because I think I really enjoyed it so I spent a lot of time on it. Now, my final module of semester one was the physics of nebulae and stars one. This module almost entirely focused on nebulae, we'll get to stars next semester, and we looked a lot at radiative transfer, the way that light is transferred through a medium, through photons moving, being absorbed, being re-emitted, that sort of thing. This module wasn't really my cup of tea. To be honest, it wasn't taught in the clearest way. There were quite a few times I left with more questions than I went in with. It was quite mathematical, but that maths wasn't actually explained brilliantly. It was an interesting enough module though, and I did well enough in it. I just didn't it was fine. It's just not too much to write home about. I, I found it interesting, but it could have been a really good module, I think. So that's first semester over. Overall, it wasn't too bad. It had some really good modules. With condensed matter not going too brilliantly, I did end that semester just below a first for that semester. And I'm talking just below, like less than 1% away on the average from being a first. So on to second semester. In semester two, I again took four modules. I took the Physics of Nebulae and Stars 2, I took Lagrangian and Hamiltonian Dynamics, Fluids, and Gravitation and Accretion Physics. Continuing on from Neb and Stars 1, we'll now look at Physics of Nebulae and Stars 2. This module focused primarily on stars rather than nebulae, and we looked in detail at stellar structure, the different layers of the sun, and how they're different from each other, how their temperature differs, and how they interact. We then looked at stellar atmospheres using some of the radiative transfer techniques from semester one. This time seemed to go a lot better. I think we just got the hang of them at this point, at least I had. They were explained again in a different way and it sort of clicked better with me, which was quite nice. I found stellar structure quite interesting, but I didn't do too well on that coding project. I, I just couldn't quite figure out what they were looking for. And this was also around the time where I was having quite a lot of stress going on in the background that it just didn't go too well. And to be honest, overall, this is my worst module of the semester and the year. And actually my degree so far, grade wise. I honestly thought I would have done better in this one than I did, but I guess I was wrong on that front. 
So, moving on to Lagrangian and Hamiltonian dynamics. This module is about as theoretical as you're going to get in an astrophysics degree. If you're in theoretical physics, it's going to get worse from there, but in astrophysics, this is about as far as we're really going to go. This module uses an entirely new formalism of mathematics to describe mechanical systems, how things move. If it has a central potential, like gravity or the electrostatic potential, you can use this, it's great. The main challenge you have is trying to figure out how to take a system you can look at and be fine with in say Newtonian mechanics and bring it into this new Lagrangian and Hamiltonian dynamics system and explain it with this new mathematical formalism. Once you've got that, it's not bad. It's pretty much using the same systems all the way through. It's that initial move this system into Lagrangian mechanics and then that, that's the hard part. Throughout this module, I'll be honest, I kind of felt like I was a bit two weeks behind on understanding it almost the whole way through. I had to put a lot of work into this module, especially towards the end, but I did get an acceptable grade, if slightly lower than my average. At least I shouldn't have to look at this stuff again too much. I hope. It was, it was kind of difficult, but anyway, it's been the past now. Okay, great. Now let's talk about one of the modules I really liked in semester two, fluids. This was my best module of semester two by far. The lecturer I had for it was incredible. Her name is Professor Moira Jardin and I love her approach to teaching. She'd teach us stuff for about half the lecture slot and then make us use it immediately. Not go away and think about it and come back and do some tutorial questions in two weeks time. Use it now. It meant that we didn't have an hour's worth of new material to learn every day and it made it much easier to digest the course. Fluids is probably one of the most satisfying bits of physics for me because it can describe using the same equations, everything from the really small things like bouncing droplets, all the way up to supernova explosions in gas clouds that are parsecs across with the same equations. So I can understand roughly what's happening in space because I know what things like water and air and stuff does here on Earth. It's the same equations, I have a more intuitive sense to it. I really liked fluids, if you haven't figured that out. I loved this module. I perhaps spent too much time on it because I enjoyed it so much, but I'm honestly quite glad I put a lot of work into this. I got a first in this module, it's the third best after the joint first for the other two modules in the year, the best one in the semester, and honestly it's going to be really useful going forwards because I'm looking at doing accretion physics for my project and that's going to use some of this stuff. Speaking of accretion physics, let's get on to the most infuriating but also probably the most interesting module of my year. Gravitational and accretion physics. Now, gravity and accretion physics are probably my favourite areas of physics and astronomy. Gravity you should be familiar with, it's the stuff that, you know, makes things fall. Accretion you might not be too familiar with. Accretion is the process that allows matter to flow into a dominant gravitational body like a protostar, or a forming planet, a neutron star, a white dwarf, black hole, whatever it is. And it's the process by which angular momentum is transferred out and mass is transferred in. It is one of the most energetic and energy efficient processes in the universe. When you have accretion onto a supermassive black hole at the centre of a galaxy, we call this an active galactic nuclei and it can produce enough energy to outshine its entire galaxy. So accretion is pretty damn powerful and it's really cool. I was really excited for this module. I'd heard some bad things about it from the previous year, the lecturer hadn't been great, but he's only doing half the module. And my project supervisor from my summer project the previous year, he was doing the other half of the module. So I was thinking, this is going to be a good, they'll fix the problems. Yeah, no. Uh, the accretion parts, I felt solid. I got a really good grasp of these. These were taught by my project supervisor from the previous summer. And honestly, there's a good chance that I will do accretion for my final year project. I really love this bit of physics. Stellar dynamics, not so good. Depending on how busy I am next semester, I have half a mind to go and sit in on those lectures now that they've got a different person teaching them, because I'd quite like to understand this. The lecturer just, oh, he couldn't teach. He just couldn't teach. Nothing made sense. I left every lecture more confused than I went in. So yeah. The grade I got for this module was pretty average. I think there may have been some grade adjustments to make it less degree destroying for those of us that took this module because, geez, this guy was just, no. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I'm going to move on. That wraps up semester two. On the whole, it was a good semester. I had various personal things going on in the background. Stress, anxiety, difficulty sleeping. Eventually, I went and spoke to student services. I was made to go to student services by one of my friends. 
And to be honest, I should have gone sooner. I am so glad that my friend forced me to go because a couple of conversations with them really helped. I should have gone months prior, but I didn't. I have only really one bit of advice on that, which is if you are struggling at university, please go to your student services. Your feelings are valid. Your thoughts are valid. There is, they are there to help. You will be listened to. You will not be judged. And honestly, you will thank yourself down the line that you went and asked for help. Despite my difficulties last semester, I'm quite happy with how it went on the whole. My grades may have slipped a little, but I've learned quite a lot about myself, how I work, how I need to work, how, how I work best. So I'm going to take all of that and put that into my final year and really go for, go for gold, go for that first that I really think I can get. I've not given up on it yet. So on the whole, academic wise, the year may not have been perfect, but I've learned quite a lot. Of course, academics are not the only thing that I was doing this year. Throughout this year, I served as the school president for physics and astronomy. This was a voluntary role that I was elected into towards the end of my third year, and it made me the primary academic rep in the School of Physics and Astronomy. This meant that I was chairing meetings of the Student Staff Council, I was attending Education Committee at the Students Union, I was running events for students and staff in the school, I was also representing the views of students to staff through running surveys and talking to people, and honestly so much more that I cannot list them all right now. I got myself elected on a platform of improving accessibility and support for students in the schools. Uh, this was probably my main goal, though I had others which included career support, doing a bit more varied career talk so it's not just banking and finance, running some skills workshops which I did alongside the Physics Society, teaching people LaTeX. I actually have a video on that but I'm going to make a new series of sort of mini LaTeX introductory course things which could be really fun so get subscribed for that. I also did my best to affect change in the union to make the school president role less of a tick box thing for the union and more of a let the school presidents make the change they want to make in their schools. So I made a little bit of headway with that, I'm not sure how much, but hopefully a bit. Overall, I think I did pretty well. I made good progress with working on accessibility in modules, making dyslexic friendly notes and screen readers far more accessible and easy to use in modules. I delivered on some of those career talks, especially looking at academia, looking at doing PhDs in Europe, looking at some other things to do with academia as well. The work in the union was probably less successful, but it, trying to change the trajectory of the union or frankly the university for that matter is kind of like trying to do a handbrake turn in an oil tanker. It's not too easy. I'm proud of what I got done in this role but to be honest I'm also glad it's over. It took up a lot of my time and I think honestly if I hadn't been school president I could have got better grades this year. That being said, I am glad that I was school president. I developed skills I don't think I would have developed as quickly otherwise. I've got a lot more confident. I'm happier chairing meetings, talking to people that maybe would have been a bit scarier. Hell, I had a meeting with the principal one-to-one -to, -one to talk about stuff happening in the School of Physics. I'm now far less nervous to send emails where I think people might get a little irritated. I I've kind of given up caring about that in a lot of cases. It doesn't scare me as much. So I'm glad I did it. I'm glad it's over, but I really value what I got out of the role. And I'm very proud of what I managed to achieve in it. Just fingers crossed that some of the changes that I made will last and will improve life in the School of Physics for people for years to come. Something else I had was a number of extracurriculars this year. Wind Band returned in person, which was lovely. It was great to be playing music again in such a great band. Honestly, you would not believe that we're on audition, but the real highlight was the return of Scottish country dancing at Celtic Society. This year I was in my second year as president of Celtic Society and we were dancing again after Covid. It was great. I had so much fun getting back on the dance floor. We had a brilliant intake of dancers and new members at the Society. We competed at competitions in Glasgow and in Aberdeen. We put on an end of semester dance for the first time in a really long time and Highland Ball came back, our annual Scottish country dance ball, with a five-piece band. I knew I'd missed dancing. I hadn't realised I'd missed it quite this much. At the end of the year I was re-elected as president for the third year in a row and throughout the year I was getting trained up to be one of the new dance teachers for this year so I really can't wait to get started. I mean I'm already started now but I really can't wait to see what this year holds with me being president again for the third year and now teaching dance classes. It's just gonna be so much fun. So that's really everything I have to say. So let's just summarise what we've got from this fourth year review. First semester, Pretty good academically, even though some of the courses weren't the most interesting in the world. Semester 2 had some really interesting courses, but some personal issues and mental health issues, as well as a really terrible lecturer, 
meant that some of my grades were not so great in semester two. The academic year wasn't the best grade wise, but I've learned a lot. I've learned how I work best and I'm going to take that forward into the next year. School president was worth doing. I got a lot out of it. I'm really proud of what I've managed to achieve this year. But given all the stress and anxiety that went along with the job for me, I'm quite glad it's over. I'm glad I'm not doing it this year. Wind band, fun to play in again, but the real highlight was Celtic Society. I am so glad that I'm back dancing again and I can't wait for this year to be even better. We're now looking forward we're now looking forward towards my final year at St Andrews. I'm going to be vlogging the whole thing. I've got monthly update vlogs where I'll be letting you know what I'm up to, a bit of a rundown of what I've been doing, what's coming up, and then once a month a week in the life vlog. I'm actually currently recording that this week. So I've been recording it just before this and just after this. So this this is the week in the life that we'll be getting. Get subscribed. Um so make sure you get subscribed for that. If you're looking for something else to watch, check out these two videos here. One was picked out by me, one was picked out by the YouTube algorithm. So please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and have a very good rest of your day. See ya!